This is sort of a surprise to him. Come on up, Everett. Be careful on the step there. Gentlemen, can we give Everett Spry a Pearl Harbor Survivor? where you were, what you were doing. Well, I was at uh, Wheeler Field, which is about 12 miles from uh, Pearl Harbor, but I was in charge of photography. So I took an awful lot of pictures that day at Pearl Harbor, Hickam Field, and Wheeler Field. And uh, it was a tough, tough day. Uh, I went to the hospital, and uh, that's where it was really sad. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Edward. Thank you. We're honored to have you with us today, Everett. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Have them talk more. Uh, well, uh, we have a, a regular program, so we will. Uh, let, we'll just move on now, uh, if that's all right. Uh, all other first-time attendees, please come to the podium. Any other first-time attendees, please come up. We've got one, I know, right over here. Any others, first-timers? Shortly after that, I was reassigned to a general studies battalion at Camp San Luis Obispo, which uh, takes care of all the officer candidates and the NCO professional development training that we do out there. Um, but unfortunately, the battalion that um, I deployed with most likely will go again here real soon. Um, they're getting ready for potential deployment here in the near future. So my heart is still with those soldiers that I served with. Um, I started out in the Air Force, actually, in 1980. I enlisted right out of high school. I served about five years and then decided to um, get out and go and get a college education and landed at Cal Poly. And at Cal Poly, I studied architecture and design. And then after I got my master's, I started working full-time for the military department. And that's what I do at Camp San Luis full-time is facility management. So if you've ever been out there, you'll probably notice a lot of changes. We're going through a lot of uh, infrastructure revitalization out there. So you'll see a lot of uh, buildings that we're re excuse me, rehabilitating and bringing them up to current standards. And I hope that we can do some historical preservation, too, because I think Camp San Luis Obispo played a very important role in, in supporting the nation during the war effort, Second World War. And uh, we do have a Center for Military History that helps us uh, do that. So if any of you are interested, let me know. Thank you. Well, gentlemen, things are moving along pretty good here. Um, we're going to take now just five more minutes. We've got just right time. Today is coffee cabinet member and retired Navy Commander Gordon Bowles. He was aboard an ammunition ship in Pearl Harbor during the bombing on December 7, 1941. His ship had 4,500 long tons of ammunition, bombs, and so on in its refrigerated holes. Here's a little about his background. He enlisted in the Navy in 1941, and after 38 years of service, he was involved in three wars and was awarded a Silver Star, two bronze stars, and five purple hearts. Per Pearl Harbor for our generation was a life-changing event and will live in our memory forever. It's an honor to introduce Pearl Harbor survivor and coffee cabinet member, Commander Gordon Bowles. Can you all hear me? Yeah. I don't know what I'm saying half the time, so it's all right. <laughs> I need to start by telling you that... Gordon, can you use the mic? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I tend to remember the funny things that happened during my 38 years of service. I tend to forget, whenever possible, the things that weren't funny. So my talk today is going to be kind of on some of the funny things that happened, because it wasn't, uh, some of the things weren't very funny. I was one of these kids that graduated from high school when I was 16. I went to San Jose State for one semester, 
I was too young to be there. I wasn't mature. And I didn't get very good grades. I didn't flunk out, but I didn't do too well. And I got home, and my father chewed me out for not having done better than I did. It annoyed me. As a matter of fact, it made me madder than heck. <laughs> and uh, so I went down to the Navy recruiting office. <laughs> I was 17, and I wanted to go in the Navy. And they said, fine, you will need to sign this form, or have your father sign this form, and bring it back to us. And I said, OK. This was in the basement of the post office building. I went upstairs, practiced my father's signature, and took the form back. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, that's fine. You're leaving in three days. Be down here at 0600 on the third day. Uh, I don't recall what it was. And you'll leave. I told my folks about it the night before we left. My father was thrilled. My mother wasn't very happy. <laughs> down to San Diego to boot camp, which got to be a total riot. I had a company commander, a chief petty officer, a chief uh, signalman, I believe he was, uh, who was about five foot six or seven. He hated two things in life. He hated everybody who was taller than he was, which was virtually everybody. <laughs> and he hated anyone that volunteered. <laughs> well, I was an eager boot down there, and every time he said, I want to volunteer, my hand was up, you know. So I wasn't high on his list. <laughs> I might digress and tell you that one morning, he shoved his face up to mine, and he said, did you shave this morning? I said, no, sir. Why didn't you shave this morning? Well, I, I don't have anything to shave, and I don't own a razor. You will go down and buy a razor, and you will shave every day. Yes, sir. And I did that. I did exactly what I told. Went down and bought a razor, and I shaved every day. I bought the first blade for that razor when I was 24. <laughs> instead of going to see. I said, fine, what schools can I go to? And he said, you can go to Cooks and Baker School or Bugler School. Now, which one do you go to? I allowed us how I wanted to go to see. <laughs> Having gotten through boot camp, the Navy sent me up to what was then called Goat Island. Any of you know where Goat Island is? Yes. Uh, and thence to Mare Island to pick up a ship. They put me aboard the USS Pyro. The Pyro was an ammunition ship. <coughs> when I went aboard, <coughs> when I went aboard, we had 4,500 long tons of ammunition aboard, which didn't impress me a lot, I'll tell you that. That's the next day, we set sail for Pearl. We arrived in Pearl at about 1700 on 6 December 1941. I was told I was going to be transferred, and Sunday morning I was standing on the quarter deck uh, waiting for a boat to take me to my new ship. There was an old chief standing there. And I got it. All chiefs were old in those days. <laughs> um, there was an anchor, a hull anchored out uh, in the middle of Westlock. And I was talking about it. And he said something about it having been there for 30 years. And he supposed the Japanese would attack it one of these days and sink it. And Five minutes to eight, as you know, the Japanese attacked that morning. He was knew more than I think anybody else did, but then chiefs are that way. <laughs> uh, 